Very good. So, Aaron, you want a screen share? Yep. We are on week seven session wrap up. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about content planning and customizing your your page, and then just questions yeah. and clarifications. Yeah. So. Uh, I know that a lot of people had questions about content, and this is a great way of not limiting yourself to a making the same content over and over. One of the things um, that uh, did, and I might be on your next slide. What's on your? It's just getting exposure. Okay, so jump back to the other one for a minute. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's um. I like how you broke this down to where you've got your primary niche and then you've got um, something that would still appeal to the core audience, but might not necessarily be directly real estate related. That's one of the ways you stimulate the algorithm to get discovered for your real estate content. Right. And then uh, don't be afraid to let your personality show through um, and what makes you and or your team you. So you can you know, make sure that that's coming through too. One of the things I wanted to share in terms of content, um, I'm going to stop you for a second. How many of you are using your visitor bureau or your chamber of commerce for content ideas? Nobody? Uh, let's do. Um, I'll do Naples, Florida. So if you're if you want one of the easiest ways to just have a content calendar that's practically laid out for you, go to your visitor bureau uh, website. Um, Paradise Coast, that's what I wanted. So if you come to this, it's got everything. It has upcoming events. It's got you know that. Are, They've got experiences that you can have in your area all the time. Uh, it's got restaurant recommendations, hotels. You know, and I had someone say, yeah, but a lot of times those are the ones that pay to be on the visit. I, who cares? It's all content specifically related to the lifestyle of where you live. So um, most of them even have an event calendar coming up. Um, and this, I mean, it just gives you, and anyone who says, I don't know what to talk about or what to post, your visitor bureau is a treasure trove. You can get a guide, you can get on their mailing list, you can get their newsletter once a week, and then literally just talk about, hey, were you aware that we have picked the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships in Naples, Florida? Who knew? You know, so just... Um, I would encourage, I know some of you already use this even for your own uh, newsletters, but just remember, this is a treasure trove of information that you can put on your YouTube channel. Um, something like this, the Summer Art Exhibit, 100 Years of Collier County's Waterfront by Paul Arsenault. Um, brilliant. That'd be a perfect thing. If I was in Naples, Florida, I would do some video about that. And it doesn't matter that it ends July 28th and because someone that's interested in art or knows that guy or you know does you can that video can still be discovered and you can just share that the um uh, event had ended so again just literally a treasure trove this by the way um also amazingly helpful when you're just setting up your 42 touch campaign for your sphere of influence or past clients in your database so i just wanted to mention that right now does anyone use the Visitor Bureau for their um, 42 Touch campaign? I highly recommend it. it um, then also, if you look at, especially if you have a, if you have a great, I picked the Naples one. You all can agree or disagree. I think it's vibrant engaging. I wanted to click on stuff while I was talking to you guys. So I picked that one in particular because I know it's a great site. So knowing what you've learned from our class, 
what would you try to duplicate from that site knowing it's a good site? Keywords, phrasing, how they've got stuff, you know, so like you can use it not only for inspiration about topics, inspiration for 42 touch campaign that will be engaging, but you can use it in terms of your, um, how to structurally format your YouTube channel so that you can ride on the coattails of what they've done with their great site. So if you open the site and it's lame, it looks like you know something from uh, 2009 um, and it's not lively or engaging, then uh, maybe let's not copy that. Let's just take the content ideas and go from there. All right, Aaron, I didn't wanna, we can go ahead and reshare again. Uh, right. But this gives you um, this approach gives you a little bit more um, leeway in planning some content than just everything has to be strictly real estate related. Um, if somebody comes to your channel and it's just nothing but market updates for the last year, they're probably not going to sit through and Am watch I the them. I can't hear Aaron. Oh, you can't hear Aaron. I can hear you. Talk again. Hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Liz, uh, Spear can hear you. I'm not sure what happened. I don't know either. Can you hear me, Jane? I think it might be something on uh, her computer. Let me chat with her. Uh, I fixed it. Oh, you did? Awesome. Okay. All right. And, you know, you might be instantly thinking that real estate is going to be your primary niche and it might not, it might slip into the second or third position depending on performance. Um, so if you're, we, we discussed at the beginning, pouring your heart and soul into these videos and they're not getting anywhere, consider doing something about, you know, around town or yeah, one of your I interests. really think the primary should be lifestyle enhanced by uh, real estate. So it's lifestyle of the area. And then you're, you will definitely find ways of working into your content that you're a realtor. You know, yeah. it's it's not going to be completely, oh, I'm just making a YouTube channel to make a YouTube channel with nothing to do with real estate. Right. Okay. Yes. It's still like real estate's right there. That, so like, but you want lifestyle or what it's like to actually live in your area or own in your area to be the main and then real estate, right? Shadow right there with it. And then that third is where you can get creative or show your personality or show the team's personality or get a little bit more unique in that third. Yeah, if your team does like um, any kind of charities or anything like that, it's a good thing to film and cover. Um, so, you know, making sure that you're showing your personality because that's what's going to get people coming back to your channel. So, for example, if I was to start a channel right now as a realtor where I live, one of my buckets would be you know, real estate, obviously. Um, and then we're always at the beaches and, you know, looking for manatees and gators. So, you know, I'd have some wildlife and the best beaches in town. And then I'd be covering the events in Northeast Florida. Yeah. That, that would be my game plan for my three buckets of content if I was to start where I'm at today. Right. Um, so I know that, you know, like we spoke a little bit, Jane, about your farm and how people are really interested in the animals. Make that one of your buckets of content. Yeah. Start filming the day in the life, whatever you're doing on the farm, um, and then work in your bit about real estate. And how would you work it in? So you can work it into the conversation as you're talking on video. Um, you can fit it in how long, you know, my 20 years of doing real estate, blah, blah, blah. Um, put an end screen, use overlays or graphics. And make sure you have your contact information and your descriptions, your yeah. about section, all that. It doesn't have to be in your face. And actually, it's better if it's not in your face. You can mention about your business, but you don't want it to sound like an advertisement. Uh, you don't want 60 seconds of, you know, promoting yourself on your videos because people will definitely click out. And don't discount referrals to the, your area. You can put it in your description. Um mentioned that, hey, you might not be looking for real estate in Northern Virginia, but I know realtors all around the 
country and I can help hook you up. Um, right. That's another way of getting passive income through your channel. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, they may have found your content because they're interested in your, your livestock or they're going to Northeast Florida on vacation, um, but they might not be moving to that area. But if you let them know, and you can also put it in your about section and other places on your, your site as well. And you might, who knows, get a referral out of it. And customizing your channel. Well, the one thing we didn't talk about was channel art, um, your banner. Your banner shows up differently on uh, television, desktop, tablets, and on mobile phones. So you want to make sure that you have everything that's important, people's faces, any information in that center section so that it shows up on all of the different devices. Yeah, I've noticed a lot of people have their social media links off, too far off to the side or they've got a QR code for contact info and it's too far off to the side. Make sure it's in that middle, middle two thirds um, so that it's gonna show up everywhere. Right. And make sure you write something in your about section. Mm -hmm. um, remember the golden rule of YouTube. It's not about you. It's about your viewer. So in the beginning of your about section, you want to tell the viewer why they should be watching your channel. What are they going to gain by watching your channel? And, uh, and about your clients. So it's a great place to put a breakdown of, you know, most of our clients are, and then fill in, you know, uh, or you'd be shocked. Some of our clients are moving here from out of the area for work. Some are downsizing, some are upsizing. So it's another place where you can conversationally work in a bunch of keywords, search terms, and questions that would show up in a search. Right. Because keywords go everywhere. Everywhere. Yep. And you can include a bio, but keep it for the yeah, end. For you sure. don't want to make it for the, the beginning. The beginning is about the audience. Like we talked about in your descriptions, your titles, everything is about the audience and not about you. Right. So make sure that you're putting their needs and what they will gain from watching your channel in your about section. Yeah. It also helps the algorithm figure out where to push your content. So it's a great way of, of getting your content in front of the right view. Because remember, they push the content to the viewers they think that will consume it. Right. And add a clickable subscribe button to your videos. Um, it's your UL, URL, and then you put question mark, sub, underscore, confirm, or confirmation. I'm sorry, I made a mistake on that. Equals one. Um, and it's that easy. You could just go into uh, Canva or whatever you use, make a little watermark, upload it right to your page, and it, you want to make it as easy as possible for them to subscribe to your channel. Right. And you just got to hit record. I know that uh, there's been a lot of people that I've seen popping in and out of the class, and they're like, I'm going to get started, I'm going to get started, and I go and I check, and they haven't posted anything. Don't let perfection hold you back from posting. Uh, like Bridget mentioned before we started recording, if you're maybe don't spend as much time on your editing and get stuff out at this early juncture. If you're going to pay somebody, but you don't want to wait, you know, they'll make content and get it out there. Um, you can't worry about your equipment or your, you know, the way you sound on uh, video or any of that stuff. You just got to get started. Yeah, everything you've learned in the last six weeks is going to do you no good if you don't start putting it into practice. And that kind of ties in too with how average YouTube consumers operate. So if I'm watching YouTube, I'm not sitting there thinking, all right, I'm going to search for the person with the best produced videos that are covering what I want to see. Now, am I saying make it a train wreck? Of course not, but none of you would be a train wreck. Um, you know, so, but, you know, just be less worried about the little details or um, be more worried about creating content and getting it out there and all this behind the scenes stuff that isn't necessarily what people see when they see your video. 
but it's going to allow more people to see it because the algorithm will work to your advantage. So more time on keywords, about section, descriptions, adding in the little things, the pinned comment, all that stuff um, is it, gonna set that stage for what you create to get out there and be seen. Once you have a, a lot of content up, start adding sections into your channel if you haven't already. It helps make it easy for your audience to find what they're looking for. So if you are going to use like the three bucket method for your different topics, having one that's about town or, you know, things to do in this area and one that's just for homes and, um, you know, that kind of thing will definitely help them find what they're looking for. It also helps set up a watch trap. Right. And I'm going to, I'm going to share a couple that have done this. And um, Leanna, you and I were actually talking about that in terms of um, you know, different areas in Northern Virginia and some of those large uh, subdivisions that have practically become referenced almost like towns. Like, so you're going to have an opportunity there, but I'm going to share real quick um, a couple that I think have done a really good job with this. I hate navigating when I've got all the things open. Um, I know this one is not new or a surprise, but the way the Hawaii team has um, set theirs up, I think is very appealing. Um, you know, the, oh, by the way, and I said this to them the other day, this is an example of a banner where the information is going too far out to all the sides. They need all that ch chunked into that uh, Two thirds. But if we come down here, look, it's got relocate to Hawaii, short term vacation rentals, buying a home on the Big Island, selling your home on the Big Island, things to do, Big Island uh, coffee shops and restaurants. And I'm scrolling pretty fast, but if you guys can see, they're up like this video nearly has 6,000 views. They are getting real leads off their YouTube channel. Uh, and they have been even slacking and posting new content. And they're still, even uh, in February, they got a multi-million dollar buyer that's out there looking right now. Um, let's see, Big Island Resort Communities. So you can, uh, lifestyle, right? So this, they I just think they did a good job of creating the sections. Um, I think, uh, Leanna, don't you guys have a couple already? I don't have sections yet. Oh, you don't? Okay. Um, so you've got you've got videos and your shorts. Okay. But you can see how as you as you get more content, then you could easily uh, create those sections. So I just wanted to give an example of that. There you go. Back to you. I feel like I'm on the news when you say that. All right. And we're just going to talk about the recap from this session, some of the things that we've learned, and then Bridget can, you know, go over anything that she wants to, um, you know, get into more detail on. Get rid of any openers. Even television shows don't have openings anymore. Like they get right to the point. You're wasting their time. Um, Work on your hook. Make sure that you're getting people interested in what you have to say to try to keep them watching as long as possible. Use every tool you have to grow. So even though other people might not be using the list of best practices, you should be using you the list of have. best practices. Um, you want to give your baby every chance at survival. Shorts are a great way to grow, especially your subscriber count. Um, be authentic. Uh, if, if you really hate doing a market analysis every month don't do it don't because do it's it. going to show up in your video that you right. don't like it um be yourself this isn't a um a pageant in fourth grade where you have to get up and sound all perfect be yourself that's what they're there for use your analytics get in there and get dirty with your analytics start really seeing where your views are coming from how you can grow um obviously with new channels or, or videos that don't have a lot of views, it's a little harder to read the analytics because there's not a lot of information. But as you grow, really pay attention to the analytics. And if you start looking now, you'll be very comfortable when your channel does get bigger. 
um, get creative with your delivery. You don't want to be the same person in the, that shows up in search as everybody else. You want to be different and unique and have movement and be the most creative way of delivering the information you have. Don't make your thumbnails too busy. Remember that most people are watching from a, a cell phone or a small tablet. Those little things don't show up. So it's better right. to have a couple big items and it's not too busy so that when people are scrolling through, they're going to catch your eye and they're going to say, what's that about? Don't ask for likes or subs at the beginning of a video ever if you do it at all. Um, a lot of people are getting away from that. People are naturally going to subscribe to your channel if they want to. Um, if you do want to, it's fine, but, uh, don't ever ask for a like or subscribe until you give them some valuable information, some reason to like, and subscribe. Don't introduce yourself verbally. Um, if people want to know who you are, they will find out who you are. You don't want to start a video with, this is Aaron Fink from Northeast Florida, blah, 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 because you're wasting their time. They want to get to what they clicked into the video for. Use keywords everywhere. everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. You can even use them in the title of the video before you upload. Um, the metadata is incredible to the algorithm. So the more it picks up on who that information is for, the faster it's going to find your audience for you. And take chances. What's the worst that could happen? You, you shoot a short and it doesn't take off. Nobody died. What's, what's the worst thing that could happen by getting out there and taking chances? Remember to show, don't tell. So if you are going to do a long talking head video, make sure you have some kind of pattern interrupt on the screen and make it interesting. I can tell you how to make a cup of coffee or I could show you. You're going to be more interested if I show you. Use movement to keep retention. Um, that's also um, sound movement. So if you're in a place that's a little bit uh, loud in the background, adding a little bit background music will definitely help. Um, and, and make sure that it's not just a talking head because people will get bored and click out. And the most important, have fun. You got to have fun. Like if you really are hating this, you're not going to stick with it. And that's why one of those buckets of information should be something that you're passionate about, passionate that you're about. going to be doing anyway. Like, right. I, like I said, if I was when making a channel as a realtor today, I'd be covering all the best beaches and waterways because we're always out on the boat and we're always on the beach. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're going to be there anyway, cover it. Right. So I think, um, yeah, any questions about that in particular, Jane? I saw your question, so I'm going to show you um, that in a minute. Um, but any questions about any of that before we just jump in on a few things? So Jane had asked, what is an example of keywords? Um, so keywords are how, I think the fastest way to say it is how do people search in Google or a search engine for you. Um, so it's literally the, the language of your audience. So when you go into Google and you're going to look for something, how are you going to start typing it in? And there's two, you have like singular keywords, you know, realtor, Virginia, and then you have long, ta long tail keywords, which are phrases. So I'm looking for a realtor in Virginia. It's a, a sentence. It's a more a phrase than a word, but they call them keywords. And using a combination of both is going to help the search engine put you in front of the right viewer. So I will show you... Um... A couple of, let's see. So do you, um, let me look. I don't know why my analytics, oh, probably because I'm in Bing. Changed my main browser and it's really messing me up. So second.
Got to move that extension over. Are you using a um, keyword server? No, I was just going to show um, some keywords on. So like if we look at Sphere Realty Group, they've got um, I do not know why my analytics is not higher. Well, uh, Leanne, I give me an idea of the keywords that you put on here. I can see your tags. So you've got Nova Real Estate, Home Values, Market Watch. Um, but in terms of keywords, I feel like in your description, it says, is the market crashing? Question mark. Are prices dropping because of higher interest rates? All of those are keywords. And that, that is something that somebody would actually open Google and type it into Google. Yep. So what I did is it happened to the day that I was posting this, one of the other like local YouTube channels, real mm -hmm. realtor channels that... Um, you know, he's got like 5,000 subscribers, gets thousands of views. He did a very similar video, like market update. And I stole his tags. Very good. <laughs> too, okay. buddy. Good. And I looked at what he, some things he put in the description and I stole it. <laughs> good. And that's what I was going to show. And I didn't realize I wasn't sure on the screen. Sorry, guys. So the, uh, yeah. So if you look uh, here, Jane, see how in her description, uh, this part is kind of nothing. Let's dive deep into the most recent Fannie Mae Home Price Index report. Buyers and sellers in Northern Virginia is the market crashing? Is it you know? So it's um those are you want to imagine like I'm sitting in Idaho. I'm thinking about buying a house in Northern Virginia. What would I type into uh, a Google search bar? And then you want to put that into your description. So um. One of the things that I think you could um, potentially do with this video, um, Liana, would be to bulk up this description. I put even more more language in there if you've got room left. I don't know if you have room left. Um, but that uh, that's an example of it. And then if we go to the main channel itself, sorry, I bounced out of that. Um, usually open tab. So if we look at this uh, description here. Well, after we keep talking about this, it's no good. I got to change it, I think. Oh, you do? Okay, sorry. Um, you can show an example of what not to do if you want. Yeah, so you just, you want to really bulk, the, bulk these up with keywords and essentially keywords are how would people search for things um, that they're looking for and remember the two biggest search engines are Google and YouTube. So you wanna think how would they search for stuff? So if I was thinking um, for your area, it would be buying farms in Nebraska. Are farms profitable? Can you make, a, does it make sense to own farms in Nebraska? We can actually, let's do that real time, hold on. So let's say that I'm, okay. Um, buying farms in So when I put that in, buying farms in Nebraska, farm and ranch comes up as an ad, US farm data, dot com not dot gov comes up um rural first land broker mls related searches so a lot of times the related searches they'll give you uh, it's a good place to look for keywords to land watch land and farm so you want you would want to um now one thing i noticed is i don't see an agent and i don't see a brokerage uh maybe one of those 
is a brokerage. I guess the farmandranch.com is. Um, I actually thought that was a listing platform. But so looking at you guys, I'd be like, um, I want to work that in to our description and our about because if people are searching for that, I want them, I want us to have a chance of popping up when someone types that. So the, the other thing is some people search and they wanna see articles. Other people search and they go straight to video. So what videos are out there about buying farms in Nebraska? Right? So you would want, uh, you would wanna put that in so that hopefully Cracky would show up, you know, in one of these first um, options. Okay. By the way, that's an example too. You guys are seeing how it's not so much the thumbnail anymore. Now it's more the it just starts talking. Okay. What else? Uh, what other questions do you guys have? Or challenges or ideas? Any of it? Uh, what's a good video editor? Or is it just somebody? Um, for a video editor, I mean, for simple edits, you can do it right within the platform. Uh, for shorts, doing it right on the app, yeah. on your phone. Um, the, you there's a really use... easy one you can use from right in your Windows. Um, there's every Windows from 10 on, I think, had a video editor attached to it. Was that in photos or was that a mm -hmm. separate thing? Yeah, in, in photos. photos, you've got a Microsoft. Um, and that, I think you just go, let's see if this works. Oh, Lavetta, I have no idea about Mac. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't either. But if you come down here and you just put in, um, it's in photos, right? Yeah, it should be. So you just go to your run and go right to photos. There's a very user-friendly one right in Canva if you use Canva. Um, it's really hard because everybody uses a different platform. Everybody's more comfortable with you know their own thing. Like I am not comfortable with Apple products at all. So I don't have a frame of reference for anybody using Apple products. Um, this doesn't want to open. There are why. plenty of free versions out there that are easy to use. And it really, it's not terribly hard if you're not doing really big edits. And if you're planning on editing yourself, film in small clips. So film a sentence or two, and then film another sentence or two, or whatever action you're doing and put them together that way, because then you're not in there trying to get the, the timing right and getting all the ums and dead space out. Right, yeah. I mean, that, that would be good. And as um, Leanna said earlier, for right now, if you just want to go on Fiverr and hire a video editor, they'll do that. It'll be pretty inexpensive. Are you familiar with Fiverr? Okay. Fiverr or Upwork, there's more editors on there than you could imagine. Um, so what? anything else? What else are you guys wondering about? So Aaron, what do you use when you're editing videos? Do you use the ones in the Windows program? Um, I have used the one in Windows. I have used Canva. I usually just do it right from my phone if I'm doing shorts. Um, the Windows one is the easiest one for me to, to navigate through because some of the ones that you pay for, they've got all the crazy sound stuff that you can adjust and you know um, lighting corrections and everything that are just out of my scope. So I prefer something that's just easier. So in my videos, then I upload them into a Google Drive for Nico, my cyber backer to do. So that being said, the phone things won't work. Have you heard of any other free programs, online programs they could use? Um, I haven't looked recently. Um, I think not Filmora, maybe it was Filmora had one, or Lightbox. 
I would just type in to see like a free editing software, see what mm -hmm. pops up. I use okay. Canva. Um, you probably would want to pay for the pro subscription, but it's $12 a month. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I prefer Canva. My concern as someone who had to take my computer in because someone hijacked my uh, laptop a couple weeks ago. Um, I get nervous about free programs and free tools. And I just, so you could, you could Google like free video editing for YouTube and that could end up being more trouble than it's worth because it could be a suspicious site or a fisher or a scammer. So I just, um, I'd be very hesitant for that. I think you're better off finding a fiber or using Canva or using the tools right within YouTube. Ruby, you have any thoughts yeah. on that? Uh, yeah, coach. Um, I have one for Lavetta and also for Jane. Um, I use usually CopCut. Um, they have other. Um, they also like um Canva. They have templates, but most templates are like more on the TikTok type of templates. But um, they are free. They are very uh, they they have wide variety of um editing uh materials there. And it is available through phone, and also they re they have recently been available on desktop or in your computer. I sent the link in the chat box. Okay. Yeah. So that and that one, you feel that one is safe and it's a known entity. Yeah. And, uh, I've been using okay. that. Yeah. Okay. So that would be a good one to then look at. And if you're just making very minor, minor adjustments, you can actually do it right on the back end of YouTube Studio. Right. I wouldn't yeah, recommend that's... doing a full edit there because right. it's, it's not. You just as... want to chop off because, oops, yeah. I forgot to hit stop recording or whatever. Then you can do it there. All right. Any other questions? So get content. If you feel brain dead, go to your visitor center, visitor bureau website, chamber of commerce website, uh, arts council. Uh, if you've got, you know, just go where people would go if they're coming to visit your town to find out what's going on there. Um, you could also uh, just think what, what do you have coming up in your life and what are you excited about, passionate about, and just make it about that and tie it into living in your area um, and or, uh, you know, lifestyle or options. So I think that would be good. Um, if you don't like a certain type of video, if you don't like a home tour or you don't like an open house thing or you don't like market stats, don't do them. There's no single video that's a, you must do this um, content. Uh, and that that's this is gonna get you on that fast track of getting some engagement. And for the moment, like we talked about, they are dramatically pushing shorts. Yeah, it's to uh, um, try and compete with uh, Reels and TikTok because yes, they have yeah, such a so, big following that they're pushing shorts to to compete and stay in the game. So you can't go wrong with a short. It might not get any views, but it's not gonna take a lot of time a lot of high production, you can crank them out pretty quick. And I mean, I got almost 50 subscribers in the just couple of weeks that I've been running a test on shorts. I was gonna so, ask you that, Leanna, are you guys getting subscribers off of shorts? No. no. Okay, but you are getting decent views. It depends, it's hit or miss, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, okay. So and just, don't be afraid to use what makes where you live a priority in your content as well. So whatever is special about the area that you're in. Um, if you want to, um, if you're really feeling like, you know, so like Leanna, if you're like, wow, we're just not getting what I thought I would get off stuff. With careful forethought, you could attempt to work in something that is trending. Um, so I'd stay away from anything divisive or political or things like that. But if something silly is trending, uh, you could say something like, um, I can't even think of something funny right now that's trending. Something that's not divisive or political, 
you could say something like, uh, oh, this TikTok craze in Northern Virginia. Uh, you could tie in something like that if you want on a short just for that algorithm boost of getting, you know, picked up. But under no circumstance, um, anything that could piss off, you know, half the people. Cows, cows in Northern Virginia. Probably good. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, any other, you know, keep doing this. If you have questions, reach out to um, me, Aaron, and Ruby. And the biggest thing is do not forget that using the platform helps you. So, you know, uh, don't forget to watch your own videos with sound on. Um, be careful, I inadvertently backed out of one of Spear Realty Group's videos. I normally, as you guys know, just open a new tab and uh, we'll research it. But, um, you know, watch your own videos, watch your own videos from a different um, computer and watch each other's and then comment and like. So it's, it's still, I feel like most of you guys right now are still at that early stage of uh, creation. And it can feel, this is one of those things that is, as Hemingway said about losing a fortune, how did it happen? It was gradual, 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 then suddenly. That's what happens typically with your channels. So you can feel like Deanna said about like, I did all that work, I spent all that time, I got 12 years. Oh. Um, but you'll be doing that and it'll be, you know, just gradual, 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 and then boom, one thing goes viral or boom, all of a sudden you have double the subscribers or, you know, like, so it will, it does kick in if you keep doing it. Remember people love real estate. They even love watching about real estate that's not where they live and where they would never buy. Hello, HGTV and all of those shows. Bargain Beachfront in Central America. Uh, it gets tons of views. Um, how many people are actually going to go by there? right so just um keep putting it out and keep refining and you know do what you can do and reach out if you need help okay all right get out there keep everything going thank you guys for contributing and participating i really appreciate it thank you thank you bye guys bye